Greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me see those who are happy. Uh, thank you very much. I, for some reason today, I feel very much happy. Uh, there are two reasons that makes me happy. The first reason is that we are about to finish the week of prayer. The second reason is that in a few days' time, I'll be seeing my wife. Amen. Today, for our discussion, I would like us to read the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10. Last night, we read 2 Samuel, chapter 9. This morning, we would read 2 Samuel, chapter 10. And I, I pray that the Lord will reach all of us where we are. 2 Samuel, chapter 10, we are going to read from verse 1. And it happened from verse 1 to verse 5. Verse 1 to verse 5. I, uh, let me just also note, I somehow like the way Kenyans pronounce verse. Um, there is an emphasis. I've listened to Cassisi say verse. So we would read <laughs> chapter 10, verse 1 to verse 5. Are we together? Now, the Bible says it happened after this that the king of the people of Ammon died. And Hunan, his son, reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hunan, the son of Nashan, as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the people of Ammon. And the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hunan, their lord, do you think David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out and overthrow it? Therefore Hunan took David's servants and shaved off their beards and cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks and sent them away. When they told David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed, 
And the king said, wait in Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. Wait in Jericho till your beards grow, then return. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Talk to us. In Jesus we have prayed. Amen. In a certain village, there was a village church. In that village church, there was a pastor who was known in the village. And in the congregation, every time the pastor would preach, there was one old man who would always shout in the congregation and say, tell them, pastor. Particularly when the sermon was a sermon of rebuke, the man would shout, tell them, pastor. And it happened that there was a storm in that area. Only the man and the pastor one day made it to church. And the pastor had to preach. And instead of saying, tell them, pastor, because he was alone, he would say, amen. Amen. At the end of the service, as they meet each other at the exit, at, at the entrance of the exit points of the building, the man says to the pastor, Pastor, the sermon was so powerful if only they were there. And the problem with this man is that he was not taking the gospel for himself, but he thought the gospel was for other people. There are times where the word of God is preached. And there are times where uncomfortable things are said. And as they are said, people, because they've got self-righteousness, would actually, instead of taking it to themselves, they will think God is talking to other people. And I'm here to say this morning that God is in a business of talking to all of us as individuals. The passage here, quite an interesting passage. Hunan had a good relationship with David, Remember chapter 9, David is showing kindness to Mephibosheth. Do you remember that? Chapter 10, David is showing kindness to Nashan, trying to comfort Nashan because of the death of his father. And the Bible says the advisors to Nashan comes to him and say, no, 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 no. David does not honor your father. He has just sent these guys to come and spy the land so that they come and overthrow it. Then they sit down. What can we do to this man? They take the man of David. They cut the beards and they cut their, 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 their garments up until their buttocks. And one scholar, Old Testament man, says it was an embarrassment in the ancient Near East to get a man and shave off his beard. It was a sign that we have taken away his dignity. And not even that, they were not only shaved, but their garments went up. They were walking everyone. Their nakedness was outside. And David's message is clear. When David hears about their embarrassment, he says to them, wait in Jericho. Number one, Jericho had been destroyed. It was an uncomfortable place to be in. Nothing grew in Jericho. There was no life in Jericho, but David sends a message. He says to them, wait in Jericho till your beards grow. When they have grown, then return. Their passport to come back home was the growth of their beard. He sends food for them. He sends sustenance for them in a place that was uncomfortable to be in. Let me come closer home. When I was called to be a pastor, I was never, I never received a message by God that says, I'm calling you to be the president of the conference. My calling was that I am calling you to be a pastor. If God places you in a certain place, even no matter how uncomfortable it is, God has placed you in that situation for a purpose. People have a tendency of wanting to rush what God has planned for them. A story is told of two friends. They get to a restaurant the one orders salad and the other one orders steak and he says the steak must be well done. 
And the one who salad, the one who ordered salad, salad came before what? Before the steak. And the one of the steak got so angry and frustrated. Why? Because the friend is eating and is waiting for the steak. And the waiter said, No, no, no. Remember that you ordered the steak, and the steak takes time than the salad. But he could not hold himself and wait. Let me say to you: when someone gets promoted and when someone gets blessed, we must learn a lesson of celebrating those people whilst we wait for our own blessings. Let me challenge and say something that might be uncomfortable to people. In this university, there is one vice chancellor. Ah, I thought you would say amen. In this university, there's how many vice chancellors? One. Wherever you are, you are not the vice chancellor. God has placed you where he has placed you. You are not the vice chancellor. There are people where God has placed them in certain, in certain situations. They have even have qualifications of criticism. They criticize so much that when God looks at them, he sees that they are not fit for position. Any good leader must be a good follower. There is never a way where a person can be a good leader without mastering leadership 101, which is to follow faithfully. Now, I, 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 I imagine, you see, one writer says, or one preacher says, there are people who got sick, even in the Adventist church. A person gets sick, he goes to the doctors, they do tests, they don't find anything to, uh, uh, with him. They say, no, you are medically right, there's nothing wrong. But later we discover that this person is losing weight, is dying. The problem is not sickness, the problem is jealousy. Jealousy is eating him that he can't even sleep. People are sitting here, they are sick. They've got high blood pressure. The high blood pressure has nothing to do with his physical condition, but the problem is that that person in his heart is the vice chancellor, but God has not called him for that. Be, be careful what you wish for. Let me say to all of us, we are all where we are because God wants us to be where we are. Now, I, 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 I have sadly, I have sadly lived. You know, I'm about to retire, I know. I was young, but now I'm old. Very soon I'll be retiring. I, 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 I do not know of any other church except this church. I have seen people come session, they don't sleep. Some of them, they even pray, Lord, we want this thing. And, and I, unfortunately, I can tell you something, that every man that is in a particular position, God has placed them there for a purpose. I studied in Zimbabwe. I'm about to finish. Robert Mugabe led for a long time. People tried all they could try, but Mugabe was still president. Up until one day, Pastor Joel Musoswi preached to say that you can strike and do whatever you do. Mugabe will only leave power when God wants him to leave. And Mugabe is no longer in power. Why am I telling you this? The message is here. Stay in Jericho till your beards grow. And when they have grown, do what? Return. Now, one of the signs of the growing of the beard was, re was regarded as a sign of maturity. People who are spiritually matured do not criticize, but they pray for the leaders. It is only Africa where one gets into leadership position and immediately when one is in that position, they pray that he falls immediately. It is only in us. And one writer says, we've got a problem, a PhD problem. The Bible says, and, and the, the Bible says, stay in Jericho till your beards grow. When they are grown, uh, uh, stay in Jericho till your beards grow. When they have grown, do what? You can forget everything that I said. What you need to remember is you are where you are because God wants you to be there. And wherever you are, do not try to be what you are not. Like I remember I said to you, I am not the president. Are we together? I am not the president. I am Mamelo. And God, in his time, when God sees it fit that he lifts you up, he will. 
And I pray, you know, that when we have an experience, all of us, when we have learned to stay in a place that God has called us to stay, let us stay in. Baraton might not be the place that you love to be. Are we together? I'm talking to students now. Baraton might not be the place that you like to be in. But what I know is that God will sustain you even in Baraton. He will give it. But I must repeat it again. God will sustain you even in Baraton. The Bible says, if you read the Spirit of Prophets, it says David will send food and clothing for those guys whilst they are sitting, waiting in Jericho, waiting for their passport, which is the growth of their beard. He supplied water. He supplied everything. The place that you are in might not be desirable, but if it is the place that God has called you to be in, stay there. Let me give you a testimony, then I will close. I did my first year in Solus in 2008. 2008, that's when the economy of Zimbabwe took a nose dive. When I was going to Zimbabwe with my friends, people were going out of Zimbabwe. And people were asking me, are you, are you well? We are running away from Zimbabwe, but you are going away to Zimbabwe. You would have money, change money into Zim dollars. In the next few hours, you have papers. It no longer bites. We were used to situations of going to the shop, having all the money you can have, but there's nothing in the shop. One thing that has touched me even this day, that makes me to always want to succeed, is that I had pastors, doctors, qualified guys who were teaching me, who were teaching me for free at some point. They were in the university, but the university could not pay them. But not even one day had they protested, not even one day had they striked. Even today, when I think of failing, I think of their sacrifices. My papers were marked, returned on time, assignments were given, they will arrive early on time in class, even when the circumstance of Zimbabwe was not right. Later on, as I am now, when I look at things in retrospect, I remember what Ellen White says when she says we have nothing to fear for the future unless we have forgotten how he has led us in the past. It is now, when I look back, I say, I thank God that when I went to Zimbabwe, it was like that. It has taught me a lesson that when God places you in a place that seems to be uncomfortable to you, it is not meant to destroy you, but it is meant to bless you. You remember that time I told you that electricity will go before Solus even had the generator. Electricity will go, and there is an exam tomorrow. Don't think the exam will be cancelled. It will still be on. You will still write. The papers will be marked. Come back on time. People did their work faithfully. There was a year in, uh, later in 2008, because of the economic meltdown, all universities in, in Zimbabwe shut down. Only Solus was opened. Why? The lecturers who were there, the staff that was there, they knew that they were called for a purpose. Mission was bigger than the real circumstance that they were faced. Now, let me say to you, if you are here and you are not ready to sacrifice anything for the Lord, you are in the wrong place. God has called all of us for service. If your service is motivated by what you get, unfortunately, God is calling for men and women who will have a bigger picture. The bigger picture is for this institution to become a world-class institution and compete amongst the best institutions. But what I'm saying to all of us, sitting here in our midst are people that will become CEOs of companies, but for now you are not a CEO. For now, you are in the wilderness. Enjoy the wilderness experience. Do not rush to exit. People rush to exit. Don't rush. Stay there and allow God to bless you there. What am I saying to you? Be satisfied where you are. God has never made an accident 
for you to be where you are. Stay in Jericho till your beards grow. And when they have grown, then return. For now, if you are a first year, your beards have not grown. If you are here, you have stayed for 10 years, and you are still here, and you are not yet living, your beards have not grown. But when God is done with you, you would know that he is good to us. We will be having a moment of prayer. May the Lord bless all of us in Jesus. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, we count it a great privilege to gather for worship, to hear your word, and to seek you in prayer. Prayers have been made this morning. We pray that you may answer them. As we came for worship, people came in different situations needing your intervention. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that by your mercy may you intervene for each one of us who came to worship you. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that our hope will be built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. We pray for Brother Henry that this problem that has been recurring throughout his life, that someday will find rest and healing from you. Bless this church and bless all of us. We commit our preacher to your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>